Hi everyone, welcome to West Explains Best. Today we are doing Reducing Fractions A. This is a worksheet in mathdrills.com. Make sure to check out the link in the description below. Great website, great resources. Be sure to click it and see if you want some more resources for help. Anyway, this is Reducing Fractions here. And what's the point of reducing fraction? Well, generally you want to reduce fractions to their lowest form. That means the top and the bottom have no remaining factors. Okay, that's what it means to reduce, have no remaining common factors. Okay, what's the point of doing that? Well, basically, if you're cooking, uh, you know, in, in the kitchen and you're looking for some sort of measurement, you're not going to look for a 35th, 35 40th cup. Okay, you're going to look for something a little bit more common. Okay, so you want to look for something a little bit more simple. You're not going to find a 2 fourths cup, you're going to find a one half cup or one half tablespoon. But why is that? Well, how do you do that? The process is you divide the top and bottom by the same thing of the fraction. The top is the numerator. The bottom is the denominator. And if you divide the top, you also have to divide the bottom to keep it equal, okay? The reason why that works is because if you divide by a number, for example, in this case, we're gonna divide by two and two because two is a factor of two and two is also a factor of four. Technically what you're doing here is you're dividing by two fourths divided by two over two. Well, the reason why you can do that and that's legal in math is because that's equal to the number one. Okay, so it's divided by one essentially. Anything divided by one is just itself. So it's gonna be equal, but we're gonna change the way it looks by dividing the top and bottom by two. Let me demonstrate. Well, we kind of already did. So we have two divided by two, and that's gonna give us one in the top, and then we have four divided by two, and that gives you two in the bottom. So now we have a reduced fraction, it's one half. Let's proceed. Here, it's kind of obvious what we're gonna to have to divide by. Anytime you see a five and a zero, you're most likely thinking that it's gonna be a five. So we're probably gonna to have to divide by five to the top and the bottom. Okay, it might not always be obvious, what you need to divide by, but you can always start somewhere and then keep going, okay? And I'll give you a demonstration of that in a little bit. But we know 35 divided by five, one of its factors is five, and that's seven. And then 40 divided by five is eight, and seven and eight have no more common factors. So that's our final answer. That was a bad circle. Let me try that again. There we go. All right, let's start with this one. Uh, I think this is one, no, this isn't a great one to do. Okay, you guys can do this one. I mean, what are we gonna divide by? What is, what can we, well, I'll give you a hint. Anytime you have an even number, zero, six, they're both even, you can always divide by two. Okay, so we're gonna divide by two and we get five over eight. And that's actually can't divide it any further. Now this is the one I wanted to do because if, let's say you make a mistake and you say, okay, I'm gonna divide by two. That's not a mistake, okay? Both of these are even numbers. You can divide by two in the top and bottom. Watch what happens though, four, and then 36 divided by two is 18, okay? I knew I could divide by two because they're both even, and then I have four over 18. The th problem is it's not in lowest terms because these still have common factors, okay? So what you really should do is you need to, this is the process, divide by the greatest common factor. Common means they share it. Greatest means it's the biggest, and factor means what are the pieces that multiply together to give you the number. So eight divided by two is four, okay? But that's not the biggest factor between them. I can divide both the top and bottom by two again. 18 and four both share a factor of two because they're both even, and I get two over nine. Now we're done. So really what I should have done from the beginning, eight over 36, is I should have divided top and bottom by four. This would have given me two over nine. That is the greatest common factor between the two. Four, four is the greatest common factor, okay? So that's the process, and I can do this with all of them. So if I go over here, three over 30, okay? This one's obvious. Usually when you have smaller numbers, a real small number on the top, try dividing it by that number to the top and the bottom first. So I have three divided by three, that gives me one. 30 divided by three, that's 10, one tenth, okay? Reduced, okay? Now, if you want to try the same thing here, 45 divided by 10, it's not 
it doesn't go in evenly. So that doesn't work. But I know that's divided by divisible by 5, and this one is 2, and that gives me 2 over 9. And there's that one. Okay, again, here's 1, 5. I can divide both the top and bottom by 5. Okay, and I get 1 over 3. Okay, always try checking that small top number, especially if it's a prime number like 5. This one, 14 over 24, I can't divide 24 by 14, that number is too big. But it's an even number, so maybe try dividing it by two. All even numbers, you can divide by two, so if they're both even in the top and bottom, try two. So we get seven over, what is that, 12? And there's no remaining factors because anytime you get a prime number, okay, and if this number is not divisible by that prime number, then you're, you're done. Okay, let's see if there's any harder ones. Most of them are pretty easy. This might be a little tough. Uh, so looking at factors of 28, I know that we get 2 times 14. I can get um, 7 times 4. So I know uh, 2, 7, 4. Um, I'm not thinking of many more than that. So what I'm going to try is I'm going to try 4. Okay, That's a big number. And I know uh, 40 is divisible by 4. So I'm going to get 7 over... 10 and what do you know it's, they're not they don't have any more common factors so that is the answer there let's do maybe a couple more let's do this one okay so 12 maybe not <laughs> i think my pencil stopped right there we go um let's see i think let's see not five not six i think it's two no four so both of you divisible by four four is that you know there's a lot that are divisible by four and i'm gonna get three Oh boy, my pen needs to charge clearly. Three over 10, and then we'll do one more. Anytime it's a five, okay, I need to screw this in or something. Anytime it's a five here and a zero here, you can always divide by five. That's another little trick. So I divide by five, getting sloppier as I go here, I get five over 12, and that's my final answer also. Okay, so I hope, hopefully this made this a little bit more simple for simplifying no joke intended, okay? And if you have any comments, leave a question below. I think I said that backwards. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. I also do videos for any other topic, so make sure to ask your questions away, check out my videos, do a search, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.